Hi, I'm Nigel Redman. In this video, we'll look at amplitude modulation. It's the basis of AM radio and audio effects like tremolo and ring modulation, but it's also fundamental to the foundation of digital audio. I present this particularly as preparation for my next video on sampling theory, so please take time to follow closely. First, a definition. Amplitude modulation is the process of multiplying two signals. In this example, we have a note played on electric piano, a low frequency sine wave with a positive offset, and the result of multiplying them together. Low frequency AM is easy to understand, in this case similar to turning the volume up and down rapidly, a tremolo effect. Next, we have our piano note, and an audio frequency sine wave for a ring modulation effect. With audio rate modulation, what's going on is not so clear. With experimentation, the first thing that's apparent is AM causes frequency shifting. We'll start with multiplying two sine waves, and later we'll see that sine wave analysis tells us everything we need to know about AM of more complex signals. Here's a graph of two input sinusoids and the result of multiplying them together. Mathematically, the most interesting aspect of AM is that the result of multiplying two sinusoids is the same as summing two sinusoids that are the sum and difference frequencies of the originals. Shown here, multiplying 1000 Hz by 80 Hz is the same as adding their sum and difference frequencies. But note, we had to scale by one half to get the same output amplitude. Let's take a look at AM in real time. My test setup multiplies the output of two sine wave oscillators, each with variable frequency and amplitude. We have an oscilloscope display to view the output in the time domain, and two spectrum displays to view the output in the frequency domain. The red one displays frequency and amplitude on linear scales. This is the best way to see what's going on with AM. Below it is a typical logarithmic frequency and amplitude spectrum analyzer, as an alternate view and appropriate for how we perceive sound. We start with the oscillators at 250 Hz and 1 Hz. We hear beating and the numeric indicators show that the result has 249 and 251 Hz sine components. As we raise the frequency of the second oscillator, the sum and difference property becomes more apparent in the spectrum. We see the output frequencies sliding in opposite directions. If we increase it enough, the lower component seems to reflect off 0 Hz and follow the high component. In reality, the difference component becomes negative. But perceptually, there's no difference between positive or negative versions of the same frequency, only a potential difference in phase. Your ears and the spectrum analyzer can't tell the difference. This is true for both analog and digital AM, but for digital, we also have a similar reflection at half the sample rate due to aliasing. We can see that each output component is half a full scale, as expected. And what does it mean when one or both oscillators have a frequency of 0 Hz? The math still works, and the output is essentially that of two oscillators at the same frequency. So the amplitude is a constant for 0 Hz modulation, but at a value dependent on the phase difference. We've seen that multiplication of two sinusoids yields sum and difference frequencies. Now let's show that mathematically. Here, we multiply two sine waves. Uppercase A and B are the amplitudes, lowercase a and b represent the frequencies, with phase offsets. For most uses of AM, phase offset is not important. Of most interest are the component frequencies, and the amplitudes give us a gain factor. We'll remove that for now and reapply it after solving for the product of sines. I'll start with identities derived from Ptolemy. We see the product of sines in the cosine sum and difference equations. We can combine these and solve for the product of sines. One small disappointment is that the result will be in terms of cosines. However, we can solve for the product of cosines and get a neater solution. In fact, restating our sinusoids as cosines also allows us to specify a DC offset in terms of the cosine of zero, without need for special casing or a phase offset. 
Here, I rearrange both in the same way to show an interesting symmetry. The results match, except with plus and minus signs swapped. We combine equations to solve for our cosine product and have our answer. The sum and difference frequencies divided by 2. Now we reintroduce our gain factor. Or this arrangement, pairing each cosine with its gain. Bear in mind, we don't typically evaluate this expression. It's for the time domain, and we hear tones in the frequency domain, where the calculation is much simpler, the sum and difference of the input frequencies. What about AM of more complex signals? Since Fourier analysis describes any signal as a sum of sinusoids, it's a matter of basic algebra. Use the distributive property. And for most modulations we're interested in, at least one input is simple. For instance, modulating arbitrary audio by 100 Hz simply means the audio will be shifted simultaneously up and down by 100 Hz. Incredibly easy math for such a powerful transform. As a supplement to this video, I've developed an interactive AM widget on my website that you can experiment with, along with a video using it to demonstrate AM with multiple frequency components. And please subscribe to let me know you're interested in seeing more videos. Your feedback is important motivation for me.